Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at Earth as a sphere. Today's practice problem is going to be focused on how to calculate distances and how to find locations. If you enjoy educational content like this, please hit that subscribe button. I'll be producing at least one video a week. And if you learned something from this video today, please don't forget to hit that like button so that YouTube knows that this is a good video and will continue to promote my videos. Let's get to the question. A, B, C and D are four points on the surface of the Earth such that BD is the diameter of the Earth. Points A and B, the location are given to us. The easiest thing to do is for us to sketch a diagram. So this is the Earth with the North and South Poles. And then we have 28 degrees South. So this latitude of A and B are the same, 28 degrees South. So since A is on the Western Hemisphere, let's make A over here. It actually doesn't matter where you uh, draw it because this is just a sketch. So A is 28 degrees south and 50 degrees west. Now if you notice, this is 130 degrees east. You already know that B lies on the same latitude because B's latitude is also 28 degrees south. Which means B can lie anywhere on this parallel of latitude 28 degrees south. In order to find the longitude of a point that is on the opposite side of the earth, such as this, the formula will be to take 180 degrees minus the longitude of that location itself. So for A, the longitude is 50 degrees west. So 180 minus 50. And since it's on the other side of the Earth, if this is on the Western Hemisphere, the other point will be on the Eastern Hemisphere. So we just have to switch it. If it's on the East, then the other point will be on the West. So since A is on the West, then this will be the East. And this turns out to be 130 degrees East which is exactly the longitude of point B. So B is actually here, on the other side of the Earth compared to A. The first question is to state the location of D. Here we are given that BD is the diameter of the Earth. This is B. So if BD forms the diameter of the Earth, the line BD must pass through the center of the Earth, here. So let's draw the diameter first. This is BD, D will lie over here. And this is the diameter of the Earth. Now, since this is 28 degrees south, this angle here is 28 degrees. And since this is 28 degrees, this is 28 degrees as well. So now we know the latitude of the point D. Latitude of point D is 28 degrees north, because now it's in the northern hemisphere. But it also lies on the same longitude as A. And therefore, its longitude is 50 degrees west. So the location of D is 28 degrees north and 50 degrees west. Calculate the distance in nautical miles from B due west to A measured along the common parallel of latitude. So they want the distance from B to A along the common parallel of latitude here. When we are dealing with distances along the same latitude, then we have to use the formula distance is equals to theta times 60 times cos of latitude. Theta here is actually the difference in longitude between the points. Since the two points are on the opposite side of the Earth, the angle here is 180 degrees. So the difference in longitude between A and B is 180 degrees. Therefore, we substitute 180 multiplied by 60 times cos of 28, which is the latitude. And the distance we will get is 9535.83 nautical miles. C lies due north of B and the distance of C to B measured along the surface of the earth is 4200 nautical miles. Calculate the latitude of C. C lies due north of B and this is important because if B is here then C will be along the same longitude because we are only going north and it is above B somewhere around here. So let's just sketch its location. Let's say C is here. And we're given the distance between C and B measured along the surface of the Earth here. This is 4,200 nautical miles. When we're dealing with distances along the circumference of a great circle, a great circle is the largest circle that can be formed in a sphere. If you're not sure about this, I've done a video on latitude and longitude. You can check the video. The video links are in the corner and also in the description. When we're dealing with great circles, such as this one, this is the biggest circle that can be formed in this sphere. Then the distance formula is very simple. It is just theta times 60. Notice that it is very similar to the formula for distance 
when we are measuring along the same parallel of latitude. The only difference is that it is missing uh, multiply by cos of latitude. That's the only difference. So when can we use this formula? When we are measuring along this great circle here or when we are measuring along the equator. The equator is also a great circle. So either this circle or the equator. Then we don't need to do multiply by cos of latitude. When we are dealing with this large circle, then theta is actually the difference in latitude. When we are dealing with the equator, then theta will be the difference in longitude. So since we are going from C to B, then this is the difference in latitude between C and B. Now, the distance between C and B is 4200 nautical miles. So when we rearrange, we get theta is equals to 4200 divided by 60, which is equals to 70 degrees. Now take note that this is only the difference in latitude. It is not the latitude of C. How do we find the latitude of C? The easiest method is to use a straight line, a vertical line, so that we can mark zero degrees in the middle. This represents the equator. And we can mark the position of B. Since it is in the southern hemisphere, it should be below zero. So this is 28 degrees south. And we know the difference in B and C is 70 degrees. Since B is 28 degrees south, then this angle here will be 28 degrees and from 0 to C it will be 70 minus 28 degrees which is 42 degrees and since it is above the equator it is in the northern hemisphere so the latitude for C is 42 degrees north an aeroplane took off from A and flew to B and then flew to C through the shortest distance along the surface of the earth first let's mark the path of the aeroplane there are two ways to go from A to B so A to B can be from here to the South Pole to B or it can be along the latitude here, along the parallel of latitude. The shortest distance is always going through the pole. So either the South Pole or the North Pole. Of course, in this case, the shortest distance will be going through the South Pole and then from B to C. So when we are looking for the distance, this is the path of the aeroplane. So we are looking from A all the way to C along this great circle. Given that its average speed for the whole flight was 600 knots, knots is just nautical miles per hour. Calculate the time in hours taken for the whole flight. Whenever we are dealing with average speed, the formula for average speed is total distance divided by total time. This will give us an average speed. So when we substitute all the values that we have now, we have the average speed which is 600 knots and then we have the distance from B to C, which is 4,200 nautical miles. This was given to us in the question earlier. Now, the distance that we do not have is the distance from A to B through the South Pole, distance ASB. This is what we need to find. And of course, eventually we want to know how many hours it took. So how do you find distance of ASB? As you know, this is along the Great Circle. So if we can find the value of theta, then we can find the distance. The value of theta can be found using this straight line here. Since we know the latitude of A and B is 28 degrees south, then we know this angle is 28 degrees and this angle is 28 degrees as well. So in order to get theta, all we have to do is 180 degrees minus 28 minus 28. And we are left with 124 degrees. So theta is 124 degrees. When we substitute this into the formula for distance, we get distance is 124 multiplied by 60, which is 7,440 nautical miles. Now that we have distance ASB, we can substitute back into this equation. And when we make T the subject of the equation, divide by 600, we get the total time for the flight is 19.4 hours. That's it for this video guys. Remember if you've learned something, please help support me by hitting that like button. And if you do want to watch more videos like this, please do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one video a week. If you want to practice MCQ questions every day, then please follow my IG account. My handle is at the corner. I'll be posting one quiz question on my story every single day. See you guys in the next video.